All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I have 1201. Thank you all for joining me for How To Tuesday. My name is Camille. I'm one of your librarians here. Today we are joined by Zach Gerard. He is going to share some tips for job interviews this How To Tuesday called Get The Scoop on Job Interviews. We're really excited to be joined by our Career Success Services, part of our Academic Success Services uh, team. And today, again, of course, we're part of How To Tuesday, which is is our 30 minute quick webinar series where we give you a bite of information to help you be successful here at Park University. This uh, webinar will be recorded and posted online following the conclusion of this uh, webinar. And if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. We will have time for questions here at the end and we can always follow up with you after the webinar as well. So we're gonna hand it over to Zach and he will take it away. Awesome, well, thank you. It's great to see everyone today. Um, great to see everyone that's watching this recording. And with that being said, we'll go on ahead and uh, dive a little deeper into job interviews. And so the goal for our session today, um, I'll talk about some of the basics regarding interviews. I'll share some tips on what to avoid, but then also what to consider adding as you're preparing for an interview or you're going through an interview and then share some best practices um, that I've learned along the way. So to start off, you might wonder, well, what is an interview in the first place? Um, the, the way that I imagine it, you're looking at different roles. Um, you've submitted your resume to an organization. They've followed up. They've said, hey, we see that you applied for a role. Uh, we would love to get to know you and uh, hear more about your interest in it. Um, and so interviews, it's a part of the um, job application process. And a simple way to think about it is it's a formal conversation between you and then an employer or an organization you'd like to work out or perhaps even volunteer at. And the goal is for both parties to gather information. So the applicant and then also the employer to get to know each other better in a formal way. And some key points to think about um, in terms of interviews. So depending on the role that you're applying for, uh, there might be uh, multiple interviews you have to do, especially if it's um, a higher level position at an organization. There's a chance that you might be interviewed by a group. So you might have maybe two people, maybe up to four or five um, that could be a part of your interview. So representing different functional areas. And then the uh, interview modality or the way you do your interview could vary. You might um, have an in-person interview. You might do a virtual one. So perhaps over Zoom or another virtual conferencing tool. Uh, it could even be a phone interview. Um, I don't think those are as common today, but they still could um, occur. And so you might wonder, well, what can I do to prepare to be successful for an interview? And so um, the STAR method, that's a tool that I talk about a lot when I'm working with students to help them prepare for interview. And it's an acronym. Um, and so the first part of it, the S, is situation. Um, so when you're answering a question in an interview, provide some context around the situation. Um, the task, so you talk about what you did in that situation. The action, um, so those are the steps you took to solve some kind of problem. And the result is, is the outcome. So to give you an example, let's say I was doing an interview and someone asked me, uh, tell me about a time where uh, you were in a difficult situation. Um, so the situation I would talk about, uh, there was a student that I was tutoring. The tutoring center came to me. They said the student was very far behind in their class. So the task that I had was to help them get caught up and get on track. And the action I took was to meet with them pretty regularly, um, go through what they had left to do, make sure they knew what was coming up so they could get back on track. And then the result was that uh, because of uh, the work I did to help them get on track, they were able to get through their class. Um, and so that's kind of a high level example of using the STAR method. And what I like about it is it's a structured way to answer interview questions. And then you also wanna go in and you wanna look at uh, the resume that you've submitted. 
but then also your list of personal accomplishments. And think about some of these questions um, for the position you're looking at, whether it's a volunteer role or um, a professional or work role. Um, what areas uh, do you have in your education, your experience, um, or your volunteer work that relate the most to that position? That could be stuff you might mention in an interview. Um, what do you have that, that helps set you apart from other applicants? Because you want to remember that with interviews, odds are you're probably not the only person they're interviewing. And so you want to try to stand out a little bit if you can. And then think about gaps that you might have. Uh, this could be gaps in your work history that you might have to clarify or explain. Um, there might be certain software or skills you have to have. Um, so you want to think about how you'll address some of those questions. If an employer asks, well, we require you know about this software or you have this experience and we see you might not have it. Um, so you want to be prepared to answer those kind of kinds of questions. And some common questions you might see. So questions for the applicant or the person looking for a volunteer role or a job. Uh, the employer, they'll want to know more about you as a person. They might ask about how you heard about the, the position or the role you're looking at. And they'll also wanna know how you deal with pressure. Um, so if you're in a stressful situation, um, how do you react to that? How do you make the most of it? And the interesting part too, um, when I'm working with students on interviews, I mentioned that it's a two-way street. So just as the organization is asking you questions, it's okay to ask them some questions as well because you're trying to get to know more about them. Um, so some questions that you could ask a potential employer during an interview, you could ask them um, if they have a hybrid option or if they have perhaps uh, some work at home that you could do related to this role. So maybe you go into the office two days a week and then the rest of the week you're at home. Um, you could ask people on the interview panel uh, what do they like the most about working at this organization? Uh, you could also ask them, uh, where's the organization going in the future? So what's coming up in the next couple of years that they're excited about? And that brings us to some areas to avoid when you're doing interviews. So as you're preparing for an interview, um, so not taking the time to go through practice questions, um, not preparing for uh, difficult questions, um, and not having a plan in general, um, that'll increase your chance of not having a successful interview. Um, and then during your interview, um, so being late, uh, that's a really bad sign. It shows you might not be very punctual or good at time management. Um, you also want to remember, since this is a formal conversation, um, you want to be careful about personal information you have to share. And there's some personal information that employers are not legally allowed to ask you about. Um, they're not allowed to ask you about your age, about your marital status. Um, there's some other items as well. And then, um, you know, distractions, that, that's a huge one. So if you're playing on your phone during an interview, if you're, you walk out and do another call, if you leave in the middle of the interview, um, you know, that shows that you might have other priorities besides this role that, that you're looking at or that you applied for. Now, on the flip side, there's stuff we can do to prepare to be successful. And, and the way I think of interviews, it's similar to this picture I've got here of a professional athlete. Um, just as an athlete takes time to prepare to have a successful game, uh, you want to do the same for interviews. As you're preparing, as you hear back from an employer, and um, you're figuring out when you're going to do an interview, you want to learn more about them, more about the organization. What are their values? What's their vision? What have people said about working there? Uh, what questions do you have about the role? Look at the position you applied for. Um, you know, see what's interesting about it. Think of questions they might ask you related to that role. And then have a plan. Uh, to be successful. So plan on arriving 10 to 15 minutes early. If you're doing a virtual interview, take some time to jump in Zoom or whatever virtual tool, make sure you have a professional background, make sure you're uh, dressed properly. Um, and then during the interview, uh, make sure you're polite, 
Uh, you're professional with your answers, so you're straightforward. You don't give too little or too much detail. Um, you prepare questions ahead of time for the employer. And then there have been some studies done to show that taking notes during an interview, uh, that can show that you're more detail-oriented and attentive. Um, and I think that's a great practice. Now, you don't want to stare at your notebook the whole time and not look at the employer or whatnot, but taking notes um, throughout different parts of an interview, um, that can show some professionalism on your behalf. And then some best practices to think about. So in terms of preparing for interview, um, just as you would tailor a resume and a cover letter and a personal accomplishments page to a specific role, um, you wanna tailor the answers you're giving in an interview to a specific role as well. Um, it's important uh, whenever you get a chance, if, if there's a relevant opportunity, um, you could discuss some of your personal accomplishments. Uh, you could put those in different parts of the interview and then prepare for difficult questions. And, you know, I've been on some hiring committees. Um, I've, I've heard some really interesting questions, like one of them from a past associate I worked with, um, he would ask people, uh, describe the process to make a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And the intent of that question was to see how detailed they, the applicant could be in terms of the steps for it. Another question I heard, this was about a year ago at a uh, hiring panel on engaging different generations. Um, you know, one person said they would ask a question, what do you regret the most to an applicant? Um, so be ready for some of those questions. And then during the interview, um, so making sure you prepare questions for the employer, avoid distractions as much as possible, and then end on a positive note. Uh, thank everyone for their time. Let them know that you appreciated the opportunity. Um, you're excited to hear back from them. Um, ask roughly when you'll, you'll hear back. Um, you know, send a thank you note um, or even just a thank you email. Those small gestures can go a long way toward um, that employer remembering who you are and showing that you really do want to go above and beyond if they hire you for that role. And just to summarize our session today, I've talked about some basics regarding uh, job interviews. I've shared some tips on what to avoid, but then also what to add or how to prepare for an interview. And then I've shared some best practices and I've shared some sample interview questions as well. And just wanna thank everyone. Um, if you're watching this recording, we have some other videos on uh, resumes, cover letters, and then um, creating a LinkedIn profile. Uh, those would be complimentary in addition to this video. And then we also have the career fair coming up tomorrow. Um, so feel free to check that out if you're on our main campus. Great, thank you so much, Zach, for that uh, valuable information. What questions do you guys have? Uh, you can feel free to unmute and uh, say your question or feel free to put it in the chat. And of course, if you're watching this back on replay, you can email me, camille.cook at park.edu, and I can absolutely answer your question or forward it on to Zach and get your question answered. Yeah, Christian, go for it. Uh, so, Zach, what would you say is an appropriate way to reach out to employers if it's been a little bit longer than they said that you should expect to hear from them by and you still haven't heard anything? Oh, great question. Hmm. I, I think it depends on the interview and then how much information you have about the employer. Mm -hmm. But then also, I think the size of the employer. Uh, so if you're if you're with a smaller organization that you've applied to. You could probably reach out to perhaps the owner or maybe the person that um, interviewed you. If it's a larger organization, uh, you'll probably want to reach out to their HR department. Um, and again, just as I mentioned, you want to be polite and courteous at the end of the interview. You want to do the same with the follow-up. But if there comes a certain point, let's say it's been several months and you haven't heard back, uh, then that might be a sign that you need to move on. And, and that's okay. Um, and you want to remember when you do interviews, um, you're putting your best self out there. There might be reasons that they don't follow up with you or, or they don't hire you. 
And that's okay because there's a lot of other great roles out there. Um, and a good way to look at it is that they missed out on an opportunity to hire a great person for their organization. So ho hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Um, Camille, I, I think one thing I'll add real quick is that um, uh, we have um, folks that help with cover letters and resumes um, in our career services team. Uh, we also have people that can help with interview preparation. Um, so if you have a role you're preparing to interview for, uh, we have folks that can help you out with that, uh, whether you're a student or an alumni. Great, thank you. Awesome. Well, if you have any other questions that come up as you're thinking about this and thinking about job interviews, especially for summer jobs, uh, internship experiences, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd love to help you. We can do mock interviews. We can do, uh, you know, cover letter re review and resume review. So um, we are happy to help you with whatever you need. And that's with your you're at a distance or whether you're here on our Parkwork campus, um, we do have those services available to you. So please don't hesitate. Um, um, and reach out if you need anything. So thank you all for joining us today for How To Tuesday, and I will see you all next week for our second to last How To Tuesday. The next How To Tuesday is called Next Steps for Park Grads, and it is going to talk about um, what you need to do to get ready for that graduation that is coming up. So we are so excited about that, and then it'll be followed by our final How To Tuesday for the semester, How To Be a Master at math um, and talk about math tutoring and, and all the services we offer here at our academic success center. Thanks so much, everybody, and have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye. Thanks. Bye.